All right, what's going on everybody? Hope you are doing well and welcome to the 2020 movie collection video. Uh, it was a lot of fun to record. You know, you never know how many movies you have until you take them down one by one and talk about them. Uh, I think I mentioned that in the video, but it's, it's crazy. Uh, but you know what? Thank you for, for, for joining us in this video and hope your summer is going well. Hope you're safe. Hope you're just doing well overall. Uh, so thank you for joining us and I'll catch you guys later. Let's get right into it. Okay, so this is just kind of an overview of the collection. It's been organized and organized and reorganized. I don't know how many times. I kind of get weird about it. Um, it's just a little bit of OCD in me, I guess. But um, it used to be in movie category order. So I would have like horror and action, sci-fi, etc. But then everyone in the family couldn't find movies. So now we're just straight alphabetical order. Um, and then for those that have watched past videos, the, uh, the gumball machine, the blockbuster gumball machine used to be here. We ended up selling that but we still have the Blockbuster racks. We picked these up at a closing Blockbuster years ago and those have worked out really nice. But yeah, let's just get right into the top shelf. Okay, this is the very top shelf and this is all I have left of the Halloween collection. Uh, it used to be a lot larger, but after a while I was like, mm, this is getting a little weird. So I sold the majority of it off, um, but we have the big box set the um, the 4K of the original, the 4K of the 2018 film, and then this was the Target exclusive. Uh, sometimes I'm just a sucker for stuff. And then that was, I believe at Walmart, the, uh, the VHS of The Curse of Michael Myers. Okay, I know you can see the fan going, and my head is basically touching the bottom of the fan blades, but it's just too hot to turn it off. Um, this is the Scream Factory print that uh, you could pre-order when the Halloween box set first went up and I was lucky enough to get one. Uh, I love that print. It's just pretty darn cool. So that sits in the middle of everything. Okay, and then on the right side, we have just a few Funko Pops, not too many. We've got Michael, Jason. Um, I picked up these two Charlie Brown Halloween themed Funkos at Walgreens. Uh, those are really cute. I like those. And then we've got Frankenstein, Thanos, and then the Walmart's uh, Gold Darth Maul. And really, I only have a few other Funkos. The only other ones I have are on the bookshelf. So we've got a couple from Lord of the Rings. We've got Aragorn and the Ghost King in with those books. And then I've got Harry Potter down here. And I've got just a cup, oops. And then I've got just a couple um, on the other shelf. These are really cool. If, if you're a Harry Potter fan and uh, you want something a little different, these have really awesome illustrations in them. They release one a year. Okay, so this is a look at the top shelf of movies. I'm gonna do things a little bit different this year. Instead of you know, holding the camera and going one by one on the shelf, I'm going to actually take them down and we will do it that way. Okay, first up we have 28 Days Later. Still a wonderful film, so good. And then the sequel, 28 Weeks Later. Not as strong, but still very good. 1917, I just watched this for the first time a couple months ago, and it was so good. I kind of wish I had seen it in uh, on the IMAX. I know my boys saw it on the IMAX and they loved it. You'll notice that there will be quite a bit of custom cover art. Um, you can find custom cover art all over the internet. Um, some of it's free, some of it's not, and that's okay because people work hard on it. Um, and then, you know, just I have it printed out after that. So this is for the Alien Quadrilogy. Got all the, the films and then the, the um, bonus discs. Love all the alien. I, I just love that world. I love the alien world. Resurrection is eh, but. And then we've got the Alien vs. Predator, the double feature. Um, the first one I, I kind of enjoy, but Requiem, meh. 
Anchorman, both of the Anchorman films are in this one, uh, this one case. Silly fun. I enjoy those. Annihilation. I'm surprised more people don't talk about Annihilation. Uh, I didn't know much going into it. And boy, I just, I really like this one quite a bit. And what's crazy is it's primarily a female cast. And, um, you know, for all of the, the, you know, female brouhaha that's been happening in films for the last couple years, no one seemed to talk about this one. I, it's a good story. The characters are pretty, you know, they're pretty smart. They're not poorly written and no one really talks about it. It's just kind of weird. Check that one out. Uh, the Apostle with Robert Duvall. Now this one I don't believe has made the jump to Blu-ray. Uh, and I wish it would. It's an, in it's an interesting film. You could almost categorize it into a religious or Christian category. And I think it's also directed by Robert Duvall. But what I appreciate about this one is, you know, with the normal kind of quote unquote religious films, you have like everything's fine. There's a problem, people pray, and then kind of everything's resolved at the end, for the most part. And I know all the intentions are, are good in those films, and I appreciate that. And they have their place. This one takes more of a maybe realistic approach to it, where the preacher, played by Robert Duvall, um, his intentions are good as a preacher, but he personally he has issues, and he has a dark side. Um, and kind of what happens throughout this little journey in his life. It's it's very good. And I kind of wish there were more films like that where they take a more realistic approach. But that's very good. Attack the Block. We I've seen this before and we watched it again a few months ago and it's still so good. Now, the Avengers films, these are all the Marvel films up to, you know, up to Endgame. So, well, I don't know how many phases that is, but it's just, there's too many to keep on the shelf one by one. So, in this first one, we've got everything up to the Avengers, the second one, phase two, we've got everything up to Ant-Man, and then we've got everything up to... Uh, end game. Back to the Future Trilogy. Uh, the 89 series of, of Batman films. I was just listening to the 89 score last night. So good. And then Big Trouble in Little China. I just picked this one up about two weeks ago. I haven't watched it yet. I've seen Big Trouble in Little China, but I haven't watched this, uh, this Scream Factory version. Okay, then we've got uh, Bill and Ted's, the Bill and Ted collection that Shout Factory released. Those are fun. I'm looking forward to the new one, which I, I guess is coming out next year now. Casino. Uh, someone had just asked me what my favorite gangster film is, and uh, Casino is it. I really enjoy this film. I love the cinematography. I love the story. Uh, just the look of the 60s and 70s. I think it goes into the 70s. Just great. James Woods is creepy in here. Sharon Stone. Uh, the Charlie Brown holiday movies. So there's Thanksgiving, uh, excuse me, Halloween, Thanksgiving, and then Christmas. Ah, this one, Cleaning Up the Town, Remembering Ghostbusters. This one I have heard about for years. Like, they were, the people who made this film, they, you know, Harold Ramis was still alive when they were working on it. It's been a while. And watched it, it's, I think, a couple hours long. You know what is, what would be, like, the perfect kind of combination of things? So, Cleaning Up the Town... So I think the perfect combination of things, so you, you get the, the Ultimate Visual History book, and this is wonderful. I got this actually on clearance at, uh, board, or not Borders, Barnes & Noble. So the book, the Steel book, which has the, um, the, the newer edition of, of Ghostbusters 2 with the special features and the audio commentary, and then cleaning up the town. I think with that trifecta, you're solid as far as Ghostbusters goes. 
Clue. Clue is still a wonderful film. Creed and Creed 2. I, you know what? The Rocky movies are so good. And then you throw in these two and they still have the heart that Rocky did, uh, the Rocky movies did, and I kind of hope they stop. I mean, I do. I think it's it's maybe time to, to hang it up for the Rocky series because you're ending on a high note. The Dark Knight trilogy. And now we're into like all the Dawn of the Dead films. Um, I did pre-order the, uh, the Second Sight box set. Got that from Diabolic DVD. Looking forward to it, but you know what? I'm just gonna hold on to to these DVDs. I don't know, they just, memories, and they're just cool. They're just darn cool. We've also got the, the big box set. That's autographed by Ken Furry. Day of the Dead. Love this Divi Max or Bubs. You know, where that has the little Velcro there. I don't know, just good memories. But then I also have the Scream Factory edition. And then the DC films. This, I, I need to find a better um, um, collection cover art for the DC films. This one just kind of does the job for now, but I'm sure there's there's better artwork out there, but this is for all the DC films. This one, my goodness gracious, Sing Along Songs, Disneyland Fun. We have had this DVD since my older boy was little, and I think we've watched it about 4,000 times. It's just one, if, if anyone out there has kids, you will understand that your kids get stuck on something like we all did when we were little, you know, but this was it. I mean, we can recite everything in this DVD. My goodness, but it's good. I mean, it's really good. The songs are fun. Uh, Dr. Sleep. I enjoy Dr. Sleep. I have not watched the director's cut yet. I just watched the theatrical cut. And I think the director's cut has a decent amount of extra footage. Was it like 15 minutes? But I thought this was a nice companion to The Shining. Dunkirk, I have not seen Dunkirk yet. My boys have watched it, but I haven't watched that yet. Ed Wood classic. I watch this about once a year. It's just kind of one of those movies that, you know, there are movies out there that just, they just make you feel good inside. I don't know. This is one of them that I just kind of feel happy whenever I watch Ed Wood. This is just kind of something random. It's the E! True Hollywood story of Poltergeist, which is actually spelled incorrectly, but that's okay. Um, and The Curse of the Exorcist. Um, I got this from someone off of, oh my God, when sell.com was around. I'm not going to give the person's name. It's on the back here. But, um, but yeah, it is uh, both of those true Hollywood stories. Escape from New York. And Scream Factory's Exorcist 3. Wonderful release. I love Exorcist 3. And the first one. I just watched the... Uh, the first and second one a couple years ago for the first time and I mean I can see why the first one is a classic the second one I was like what am I watching this is so weird um, not really for me but then this one goodness me just great Fantastic Mr. Fox the Criterion Edition uh, we love this one we love this and uh, I love dogs just all of the uh, we love the story you know first first and foremost, but just all the work that must have gone into putting this one together. Sheesh. Hey, he saved every one of us. Flash Gordon. Um, I watched this for the, one of the criteria for the 24 hour movie marathon. And I forgot how fun this movie is. It's cheesy and it's just, it's just a whole gob of wonderful cheese. And the queen score, ugh. The fog. Love it. Friday Night Lights, the movie. 
This, these are the discs from the Friday the 13th tin. So there's the tin. And then all the discs that are in here, I got this, the custom cover art and I just put them in here. Cause I didn't like how they were packaged in that set. But then, listen, I'm a sucker. I really, I'm so much better, but I am a true sucker. Uh, I pre-ordered the, the new set. I didn't get it from Scream Factory with the posters and stuff. Um, I got it from uh, TCM.com, so I just got the regular version. But yeah, there we are. All the Friday the 13th. Uh, the Friday the 13th, Halloween is my favorite horror series. But if we're talking overall, as far as sequels go and how in, uh, how much enjoyment I get out of them, I get more enjoyment out of the Friday the 13th sequels. But I do enjoy Michael Myers more. Galaxy Quest. I just watched that documentary, I don't know, not too long ago, a couple months ago. Uh, and it was, it was pretty good. But Galaxy Quest is it's a lot of fun. And Game Night. Game Night's one of my favorite comedies in quite some time. I did, there just haven't been a lot of comedies out there that I've enjoyed in I don't know how many years, but this one was good. Get Hard with Will Ferrell and Kevin Hart. Um, now listen, I know this is just ridiculous, stupid, but damn it, we laugh every time we watch this one. Will Ferrell is hit and miss, but uh, I don't know. We just get a kick out of that one. There's another one that's coming up that is even more ridiculously dumb, but we just enjoy. Uh, the Ghostbusters films. So you've got one, two. These are the movies from the. Uh, these are the movies from the Steelbook. You've got the special features disc, and you know that one's in there too. Because you know I'm just a completionist like that. Gleaming the cube. Who knows if this one will ever come back into print? This one for, I don't know why I, I watched this one growing up and it wasn't like, I wasn't a skateboard kid or anything, but it's just fun. Um, so whoever, whoever owns the Pioneer Artisan Library, get cracking. Let's get this one in print on DVD, Blu-ray. Come on now. I don't know what's holding this one up. You guys remember the days when a special feature you could put scene access as a special feature oh, goodness. now next up are all of the godzilla films i have the big godzilla criterion set and god bless criterion because it is a beautiful box set but it is ginormous and i'm not quite sure where criterion expects us to put that huge ginormous thing on our racks. But I give them total credit, it's beautiful. So I had to go and and hunt down the artwork for all of the uh, for all of the titles. Now these two, we'll start with this one. This is the first one and it's got you know the first so many first four discs in there. And then this one has the next so many discs in there, up to eight. Uh, great set. It's so fantastic to see all the Godzilla films on Blu-ray like this in, in one set, uh, you know, for that era. Hopefully they can get the, attain the rights to, uh, to the rest of the films. But then also, cause I'm a weirdo, I have all the individual covers printed out as well and just the artwork on these I love the artwork on these I've watched before the last Godzilla film came out King of the Monsters I watched all of the Godzilla films they're so fun they're just fun movies
gosh, Criterion did such a nice job with these. Okay, so let's take a look at the second shelf. Now, we just finished up with those other Godzilla films. So let's just take a broad look at what else is on this shelf, and then we'll go through them individually. I have the remainder of the Godzilla films uh, just in these cases. There's that one, Millennium Series, that was the Heisei Series, and then we've got, I've still got the original release. Shin Godzilla, this one's good. It's a little different, but it's good. I, I recommend checking this one out. Um, you know, the American Godzilla from a few years back. I liked it. Uh, I know people have, you know, varying opinions on it and that it's all good. I'm, you know, I'm not here to say anyone's wrong, but uh, I enjoyed this one. I enjoyed this, the slow burn. Yes, it did get a little frustrating when we kept cutting away from the the kaiju action i get that but i did enjoy this one and then uh king of the monsters this one infuriated me more than uh the previous godzilla it it, it was fine i mean the acting was fine i just felt like the the kaiju action was choppy and it was dark i had a hard time following it and sometimes we went with the the human characters uh, a little too much when I just, I didn't care about their story, to be honest. Um, and then we've got all the Harry Potter films. And we actually just watched all the Harry Potters again. And boy, do they hold up well. So that's just, that's the whole set. You guys know Harry Potter. I don't have to go through these. You know, we tried watching those newer Harry Potter films. The, uh, what are they? The Fantastic Beasts films. We just can't get into them. Uh, I love the universe, you know, that the whole Hogwarts universe and, and all that, but those two just couldn't keep our attention at all. Um, Isle of Dogs. Did you hear the rumor? I like this one. Not as much as Fantastic Mr. Fox, but this one's good. Indiana Jones. This is just the box set in a, diff in a custom cover case. And I went out of order. Pardon me. I went from I to H. We're going backwards. Hateful Eight. This is one of my favorite uh, Quentin Tarantino films. Haunted Mansion. We still get a kick out of this. Now, granted, we're huge Disneyland fans. We really are. But uh, we had a fun time with this movie. The Heat. Now, see, here's one directed by Paul Feig. Sandra Bullock, Melissa McCarthy, and I watch this once, twice a year. I just watched it a few weeks ago, and it, it still makes me laugh every time. Uh, I like the, the chemistry the two actresses have together. It's funny. Uh, you know, Paul Feig didn't let them go off script. I mean, not that much that, that you could tell, like, you know, compared to Ghostbusters, but I like that one a lot. The house with a clock in its walls. This one surprised everyone in my family. This one was really good. And it's a nice, if you're kind of looking for a spooky family movie to maybe introduce, you know, your kids into that genre a little bit, uh, I highly recommend this one. It's good. And I think it's rated PG. And I think Eli Roth directed this one. I do, I recommend that one. This one I never hear anyone talk about. Um, I think we're alone now. I really like this one. Uh, Peter Dinklage, Elle Fanning, and there has been some sort of catastrophe in the world. I don't remember if they ever said, but there aren't many people left. And um, Peter Dinklage just kind of lives in isolation, and but he seems content enough you know, he has his routine as to what he does every day. And Elle Fanning comes into his life. And it's just kind of how they um, get along with each other. And, and they kind of go on a quest. And it's very good. It's reminiscent. It's reminiscent 
to the station agent where Peter Dinklage once again kind of plays a quiet character. He stay, he kind of sticks to himself. He has his own hobby and these two people come into his life and it's how, you know, they kind of acclimate to each other. Um, I highly recommend this one as well. I love the station agent. There are all the James Bond films. Uh, to have them individually would just take up too much space. So I found uh, someone who had this custom cover art and boom, it's in four volumes. I've never been a huge James Bond fan. I think I've only seen, I've seen a few films, but that was really growing up and that HBO had a tendency to show the same one all the time. It's just never been my thing. Uh, the Jaws Collection. The third dimension is terror, don't forget. John Carter. John Carter I watched for the first time during the last 24 hour movie marathon. And I can tell you, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I know people shit on it, but I don't know, I liked it. Uh, the Jurassic Park slash world box set. Another series that I enjoy, they need to end it. I'm really hoping this last one is it. Um, you know, there's only so many times people can get eaten by dinosaurs and run from dinosaurs and go back to the island hunting dinosaurs, but whatever, they're fun. King Kong collection. This was custom cover art that someone had made. And I have not seen the 70s King Kong and I haven't seen King Kong Lives, so I still need to watch those. Peter Jackson, King Kong. That's a lengthy movie. It's good, but boy, oh boy. Skull Island. Oh, I love this one. This was custom cover art. Um, ah, I can't wait for Godzilla King Kong. I'm bummed it moved to next. Well, everything was moved to next year, but I'm looking forward to it. Knives Out. I gotta tell you, now when we saw this in the theaters, I thought, okay, yeah, this was this was enjoyable. And then my younger son, he just, he's in love with this movie. He loves it. And so I've seen it several times and it's good. Here's the other Will Ferrell movie that I was talking about. I I don't believe in guilty pleasures. I, really, I don't, but I'm just mentioning it um, because I think if you like a movie, then you just like a movie. Uh, Land of the Lost, it's not great. But there's something about it that cracks us up. It's so silly. Logan. It was a nice ending to the Wolverine character. Hugh Jackman played him really well. Uh, one that people seem to overlook, Lone Ranger. Um, we like this one. We've seen it several times. It's fun. It's just a fun movie. Okay, next up are the Hobbit slash Lord of the Ring movies, one of my favorite franchises of all time. Okay, first up are the uh, the animated movies that came out in the 70s, the Rankin Bass films. So there's the Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, and then Return of the King. I've had this box set forever. Here is the, the, ex oh gosh, the extended DVD version. Then remember you had to send away for this box. Talk about an amazing set. The special features in these were just something else. But I love those films. Great memories too. Uh, this is the set on Blu-ray, the regular edition, and then the extended edition on Blu-ray. Then the Hobbit films. The Hobbit films I thought were okay. They just didn't seem to capture, um, they just, they didn't seem to capture the same spirit uh, as the Lord of the Ring trilogy films. Uh, it felt more, I don't know, realistic. These felt more CGI. 
it just, I don't know. It shouldn't have been three films, these. I think maybe two, maybe two. Anyway, Hobbit and Smaug and Battle of the Five Armies. And then these are the extended Blu-rays. Okay, let's take a peek at the rest of this shelf in its entirety. Oh, and then over here, I got my 49ers thermometer, wall thermometer, and then the sign. The Matrix collection. I just got all of the box set in this set. Takes up less space. Here's another Disney DVD that we've seen eight trillion times. But it's still good. We watch it almost every Halloween, and it's still fun. All of the Mission Impossible films. And to be honest, I don't remember much about anything after three. Eh, films I gotta watch again. Monster House. This one creeps me out, I just think because of the animation style. But my younger one loves it. Monster Squad, classic. Monsters Incorporated, my favorite Pixar films. I, enjoy, I like both of these a lot. Never Hike Alone, um, this one's really good and I've pre-ordered the, uh, the new one, Never, what is it? Never Hike Alone, Again in the Snow. I, I know it's in the snow. I recommend getting these, they're good. Night of the Living Dead, Criterion Edition. Wonderful. But I've also held on to the uh, this version of Night of the Living Dead, just cause I'm a weirdo. Nightmare Before Christmas. I have wonder, wonderful memories of this movie as well, and I think it still holds up. Over the Garden Wall. Uh, this was on Cartoon Network a few years back. How many episodes are there? There's several episodes. I wanna say three, six, ten. It's a 10 episode series. It has such a great fall atmosphere to it. Uh, it's a story about these two brothers and just kind of the adventures they go on. I check. I recommend checking that out. And then Overlord. Another one where uh, my boys were talking to me about it and I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. I've never heard of Overlord. Uh, and then I saw it and thought it was wonderful. You know, you don't realize how many films you have until you take each of them down and go individually through them. It's quite something. Passion of the Christ. Paul. Just watch this one again. Well, Passion of the Christ, I mean, it's really well done. And uh, I watched it earlier this year. It's powerful. Mel Gibson did a, did a great job on that. Paul, I just watched this year, earlier this year. It's still funny. Philadelphia Experiment. It's good. 80s movie, it's good. All the Pirates movies. We have fun with the Pirates movies. Captain Jack Sparrow. Uh, all of the Planet of the Apes films. The originals. All the originals are in here. Oh, those are good. And then you want to talk about a trilogy that I think people overlook. Planet of the Apes films. The new ones. Oh, not the Mark Wahlberg one. That one's up here. That one, not so much. But the new, the newer trilogy. The Predator films. Love 1 and 2. Predators, I liked the concept of Predators. Mm, the film itself was okay. Uh, the newer one was okay. It seemed a bit choppy. I like both of them. 
I like Prometheus more, but Covenant was good. I'd like to see Ridley Scott finish it up. Whether that happens, I don't know. The Psycho Films. Purple Rain. Prince is one of my favorite artists of all time. And uh, Purple, Purple Rain is just, it's a classic in my eyes. Return of the Living Dead. Now, I, I did used to have the, uh, the Scream Factory release, and it's very good. But I thought, you know what? I don't, I don't mind just watching it on, on DVD. I'm good with the DVD. The Rocker, another silly film that we have fun with. And Rocket Man. I've seen this movie a couple times. Um, my boy, well, my younger boy likes it a lot. He likes this more than um, Bohemian Rhapsody. I know those two kind of get lumped together because they were released around the same time. Um, both have their pluses and minuses, but uh, but this one's really good. And the young man who played Elton John did a great job, and I know he sang the songs as well. The Rocky movies. Love all the Rocky movies. All of them. Here's a little known fact. I cry at the end of almost every Rocky movie and at the beginning of almost every Rocky movie when they recap what happened at the end of the last one. Because I'm just a sappy sucker. Rudolph. Love watching this one. Bumbles is one of... Uh, Bumbles is probably our favorite character. We love Bumbles. Scooby-Doo, one and two. My gosh, we've seen these so many times. Another one where both boys enjoyed watching them. The Session Nine. Now, I saw this for the first time last year, but I don't think I was, like you ever watch a movie, but you're not totally paying attention. I paid attention this last time when I watched it and it's creepy. And it's this disc is packed. I recommend watching Session Nine if you haven't seen it. Seven Samurai. I watched this one for the first time last year. Oh, I can see why so many people love this one. Great release by Criterion. Uh, Shazam on 4K. We, we saw this in the theater, thought it was pretty good. And I just picked this up, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, I think it came in. And The Shining, classic. Shutter Island. My older boy enjoys this one a lot and it totally surprised me uh, the first time I saw it. I had no idea what, what the ending was or anything. This one's really good. Signs. Love it. It's kind of creepy. All of the Spider-Man films. The original three. I, you know what? I love one and two. I like the third one. It seemed like they just threw a lot in there into that movie. Next two, I liked, um, what was his name? Andrew Garfield. I liked Andrew Garfield as Spidey. Now, granted, I, you know, I'm not a Spider-Man comic reader or anything, but I, the movies were all right. I thought he did a good job. And then into the Spider-Verse. I didn't think I was going to like this one, but ended up liking it quite a bit. Now we've got all the Star Trek films. This is the box set that all these following discs came in. And it's a really nice looking box set, but it's ginormous. So I got custom cover art and put them in these with the original poster art. Well, I think this is all the original poster art, but it just looks kind of badass. So the discs are in there. I just watched all of the Star Trek films this year. And I gotta tell you, by far, I enjoyed the uh, original crew movies more than any of the others. There was something just very, mm, I don't know, more genuine about the original crew. I never watched Next Generation. I don't think I've seen a single episode. And just by just watching the next generation of films, I found the characters to be really annoying, which isn't fair because I know from everything I've heard, next generation is, is great. Um, but just by going off the movies, I'm like, oh, these characters are shitty.
poster art looks good. Um, the discs are great. Movies are great. You know, then we get to Generations, and I thought Generations was okay. Eh. It was okay. You know, First Contact was probably my favorite out of the Next Generation films. You know, then you get to Insurrection. I was like, I don't care. Nemesis, I don't care. Um, this one, I mean, was okay. It, it was, it's, you know, you get to this one and it's like, my gosh, you go back to those earlier, earlier films and they look prehistoric because there's just like all sorts of craziness going on in these. Into Darkness, eh, all right, it was fine. Beyond, okay, you know, it's okay. Um, and then I also picked up, because I'm just a goober, I picked up this one, The Wrath of Khan Director's Cut. And then to round out that shelf, I've also got the DVD set. Okay, now we are on the next shelf down. First up are the despecialized editions of Star Wars, the entire trilogy. It's all official and nice looking. So these are, I know there's a couple versions out there of the original trilogy, Untouched. Um, but I went with the despecialized version. It's just nice to have the originals. But then I also have the newer versions of the Blu-rays. These are just in custom cases. Empire. Now we've got Jedi and I have, I think I put the, yeah, the bonus discs in there. Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, Revenge of the Sith. I like Revenge of the Sith. Out of the prequels, I like this one the most by a lot. And we've got Force Awakens. Last Jedi, and then finally Rise of Skywalker. And then kind of the offshoot films, we've got Rogue One, and then Solo. And then I still have the original DVDs because these have some special features that were not ported over um, to the Blu-rays. There's quite a bit of stuff on some of these. DVDs. Step Brothers. We've seen Step Brothers quite a few times, but it's still funny. Then we have all of the Studio Ghibli films. Castle in the Sky. In fact, I still need to watch a few of these. I haven't seen, like, I haven't seen Cat Returns. A lot of these I saw in the theaters the first time because they would have the, anyway, over the year they would show the Studio Ghibli films. So a lot of these, uh, for the first time I saw in the theaters. Totoro. That one, I like that one a lot. Nausicaa. I haven't seen Pompoko yet. Ponyo's Sweet Movie. Porco Rosso I haven't seen yet. Princess Mononoke. Arietti. Tales from Earthsea, I haven't seen yet. And then finally, The Wind Rises. Super 8. You know, when I first saw Super 8, it was meh. I thought it was okay, but watching it again about, maybe about a year ago, I enjoyed it a lot. A lot more than I did the first time. All the Superman films. Superman's a classic. I mean, what can I say about Superman? This has a... Uh, this version was released about a year ago, I want to say. It's 
this was the documentary really good documentary about superman lives and just what happened with that whole film it's too bad i would have liked to have seen it but really good stuff in there swamp thing we actually got this um autographed at comic -Con, san diego comic-con well many years ago because we haven't been in a while uh, but adrian barbeau was there and len ween was there uh, so we got this autographed and uh, poster. I got a fog poster autographed by Adrian Barbeau as well. Uh, but Swamp Thing I like. Ricky Bobby. Terminator movies. Um, if I'm being honest, I really don't remember much after Terminator 2. I think I saw Terminator 3. And I don't know if I've seen a full movie after part 3. And then I just got this one used not too long ago, Dark Fate. I haven't watched it yet. I need to sit down and just watch them all again. Uh, the Warner Archive release of The Thing from Another World. I just saw this for the first time about a year ago. And it's good. It's really good. The Arrow release of The Thing. Beautiful set. Classic movie. Beautiful set. Comes in a nice hard box. And then there's the Scream Factory release. Then we've got the Thing prequel. I mean, it was okay. It was okay. Tin Tin. We love this one. It's too bad that they, they didn't make a sequel to it. We would have liked to have seen more, you know, of these stories. Because there's a lot of Tin Tin stories. The Six Tremors films. This was a steel book we picked up from Walmart and I want to find some custom cover art for Tremors because I'm not, I, I don't especially love that, that cover art and I'd like to get it out of the steel book. I got it for a really good deal. So I don't think I've seen past Tremors three. So I need to kind of finish out those movies. I mean, nothing beats anything after one. Trick or treat. I know people have been wanting this one on Blu-ray for a while, and I agree. It's a fun little film. It's a shame that it hasn't gotten a better treatment. I'm sure it's just some silly legal reason that's holding it up. Tron, both Tron movies. The original and then Tron Legacy. We like Tron Legacy. We like both films, but we really had a good time with Tron Legacy. There's rumors of another Tron movie coming out, so we hope so. Tropic Thunder, and Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. <laughs> this one's fun. Okay, next up are all of the Universal Monster movies. Creature from the Black Lagoon, Dracula, Frankenstein, Invisible Man, The Mummy, and Wolfman. This one was released not too long ago. Urban Cowboy on Blu-ray for the first time. Urban Cowboy is just one of those movies I've enjoyed since I was younger. Don't know why. It's not like I grew up around country folk, but it's just something about it. Vanishing of Sydney Hall, kind of one of the more obscure A24 films. And Venom. Venom was okay. I don't know. It kind of is what it is. Okay, now we'll have a look at the next shelf. This is the remainder of the regular movies, and then we move on to TV shows. And then actually, I'm just gonna show the next shelf while I'm here, because it's mostly Mystery Science Theater. So what has happened with MST, I have all of, I'm a huge MST fan. I've been buying the releases since the Rhino Records days. Um, you know, and then continued on, continued on with Shout Factory, but sometimes I like to watch, you know, like certain seasons. So like this is um, season five, volume one. I broke it down like that. That way, if I'm in the mood for like a earlier season episode from season two, I can pick from those. If I'm in the mood for a later, you know, Mike episode from like season eight, season nine, 
I can choose from one of those. I mean, they're just really simple cover art that I made, but it works. Okay, so the last of the movies, we have M. Night Shyamalan's The Village. This one, I don't believe, has made the jump to Blu-ray. Surprisingly, I really have no idea why. The Way, this one was directed by Emilio Estevez. I like this one. It's just kind of a, it's a drama, but it ends up being a sweet movie about a character that passes away. I'm not going to give away who it is, but a character passes away and then that character's father kind of, you know, goes, goes after, you know, his son and goes on a pilgrimage and it's, it's just really neat. Good story. Wayne's World 1 and 2. The Wildlife, one of those movies that finally made it onto DVD, which is through this Vault series. And I know they just announced it for Blu-ray, but let's see if it's with the original music. If the original music has been changed, then I'll just stick with this. Because I heard that's that was the reason why it's been held up all these years, is, is because of the music included. But it's kind of a pseudo follow-up to Fast Times. And I think this came out in 84? Yeah, 84. Witch's Night Out. Okay, now Witch's Night Out is one of those Halloween cartoons that came out way back in the day. And I used to watch it every year. Um, the characters, it, it's very much kind of of its time. It's very kind of 70s-ish. Um, but it's just one that I have a lot of memories of, good memories of. The Wolverine. We like this one. We like all, all, even the kind of less popular Wolverine movies. We like those as well. We just like uh, Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. Won't You Be My Neighbor, the Mr. Rogers documentary. Holy Moses, by the end of this one, you will be crying. And it's a good cry. I like Mr. Rogers quite a bit. He seemed like the real deal and just a kind of a, uh, just a kind person. Then we have World's End, Hot Fuzz, Shaun of the Dead. Yarp, good films. Oh, here's the other Wolverine movie. X-Men Origins, Wolverine. Even this one we have fun with. It's not great, but we have fun with it. And then we have this big um, Mill Creek box set of horror movies. Really all the standard fare that you expect from these big box sets. Now we move on to TV shows. Avatar The Last Airbender, the complete series. Highly recommend. That was a, that was a really good animated series. Um, Bob's Burgers, I picked these up off of eBay, and I have to be honest, I don't know if they're legit or not. I don't think they are, but I don't know. They play fine. I didn't like Bob's Burgers for the longest time, and sometimes if I'm just not in the mood, but it's grown on me. But anyways, two, season three, and then I haven't watched anything past season three yet, so there's four... Five, and I thought they were done with Bob's Burgers, but apparently they're still going. Six, seven, and then eight. Okay, continuing on, Catch-22. It's a shame this was only released on DVD, but that's what a lot of TV shows have been doing for a while now. They don't get a Blu-ray release, uh, but this one would have looked really good on Blu-ray. Hulu exclusive. We've got early edition, complete, complete uh, series. Freaks and Geeks. No, I've not opened this one yet. I have the, and which you'll see in a little bit. I have the uh, the yearbook edition. And you know what? I mean, this is probably one of the only sets that you know what? I'll just support no matter what because Shout Factory went above and beyond with this one and purchasing the music rights and making every, you know, just putting everything in that was original. So I just appreciate that for, for Freaks and Geeks. It's one of my favorite shows of all time. Then we've got Friday Night Lights. That is the complete collection on Blu-ray from Mill Creek. But hold on to your DVD set because they didn't port over many of the special features onto the Blu-ray. So if you want it all, just hold on to both. 
And then we've got Gravity Falls, the complete series. This was a fun animated series. Okay, next up is Invader Zim. These were the DVDs that came out a long time ago. This was a custom kind of metal case that also we picked up a long time ago. We tried watching the, the newer Invader Zim. It's fine, but I don't know. We just like the original. Legend of Korra. Korra was okay. It was okay. We enjoy um, Avatar The Last Airbender more. And then we've got Mama's Family, the complete, the complete series. Mama's Family is one of my favorites. It's still, maybe not the later seasons, and that's possibly why I haven't opened a couple of these, but I uh, just, Mama always cracked me up. It's a fun character. Vicki Lawrence just did a great job with her, and it is fun to pop in these discs every once in a while. They still make me laugh. Now I showed you these earlier. I am not gonna take all these off the shelves because there's really not much to show. It's just, it's the entire Mystery Science Theater collection. Um, the ones that didn't get official releases, I have my own copies of. You know, the bo all the bonus discs in, in one set. We've got the movie, all of the, oh no, excuse me. That is the, uh, the MST reunion show, all of the cinematic Titanics, all of the film crews. There were four of those discs. Guy from Harlem, that was funny. That's kind of the summertime one. And then the, uh, the Frank. Then we've got North and South, The Office, Orville season one, and Scooby-Doo, love Scooby-Doo. This one, oh my gosh, we watched these, especially Legend of the Vampire, so many times when my boys were smaller. Scooby's still great, he is. I haven't seen the new movie, Scoob, but I don't know, we like Scooby-Doo. Okay, now we have a look at the last shelf with TV shows in a random box set. Okay, first up is Clone Wars, the entire, almost the entire series. Then we've got The Lost Missions. These were the two Clone Wars DVDs that came out early on. The Clone Wars movie before the TV show. Rebels, Rebels was okay. I haven't seen all of it to be fair, but eh, it was all right. So there's Rebels season one, season two, and then season three. And sure enough, season four. And then we have Stranger Things. It's just custom cover art. Instead of having the big Target exclusive editions on the shelf, I went with these. Uh, Stranger Things should have stopped at season one. Season two was okay. Season three was a little bit better, but it's just, I think it's time for Stranger Things to come to an end. Okay, finishing up the TV series, we've got Star Trek, the original series, custom cover art. So there's season one, season two. That's my son sitting down and season three. The animated series. Then we've got Teen Titans, the complete series on Blu-ray, which Warner released not too long ago. We like Teen Titans. The original Teen Titans is really good. We have good memories of that. And then this was Teen Titans Go versus the original Teen Titans. Another one of my favorite shows of all time, The Wire. That's the big box set. Love The Wire. I just watched the whole thing again. Boy, I don't know, about five or six months ago. Great show. And then this was just kind of on the end, the Clint Eastwood Dirty Harry box set. There's a look at that. 
Okay, so in the middle of the shelf, I'm actually going to turn off the light for a sec. This was released by Monster when Tron Legacy came out. It is um, it is a one big speaker in the shape of of the of the disc of the Tron disc, and the sound is really good. And I wanted some speakers out here. I had tried one thing, didn't really like it, so I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to put the uh, the Tron speaker out here. And I just made a little hillbilly setup where I got a cheap um, CD player, which has an AM FM radio, and just hooked the two up, and there we go. So it's kind of neat. It looks it looks cool, and it also sounds really good. Then we also have, now I've had these in my collection for quite some time. If you've seen previous videos, this is the Drive UK release with really that awesome kind of padded and almost embroidered slipcase. Drive is a cool movie. This is purely just kind of for eye candy. And then Attack the Block, which is, this is a glow-in-the-dark case. Okay, so if we continue on, we have um, both of the Avengers sets from Target. It's the Infinity War and Endgame sets. Then we've got the Ghostbusters 1 and 2 Steelbook. This just is for memories. <laughs> this I saw on eBay, and I just started chuckling. So this is an old Circuit City tag. And for those of you who've been you know, buying since the early days, you know that's a Circuit City tag. And just to see the, the cone in the movies, the two pack together like this, I don't know. Just the collector in me came out and I was like, oh, that's pretty neat. Dawn of the Dead VHS, just cause, just cause it's cool. Then we've got the Star Trek VHS tapes. There's a few VHS tapes. There's the Fog, Godzilla 1985, MST the movie, Return of the Living Dead, and then the Wildlife, which you just saw the DVD not too long ago. Actually, I should display them like that. That looks kind of neat. Okay, then down here, I'll just quickly show our CD collection. You know, it's all over the place. ACDC, Bad Brains, we've got Coldplay, Chris Cornell, I love. Uh, Fashion is a local hip hop artist. To the Gorillas, Lady Antebellum. I'm not really huge into country, but I like the sound of her and her group. You know, Bob Marley, Megadeth, Metallica, Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Radiohead. If I want to curl up in the closet and just cry uncontrollably, I'll listen to some Radiohead. Rush. What else do we have down here? Smashing Pumpkins. I love these two albums. Soundgarden. U2. We saw them in concert a few years back. Suicidal Tendencies. Yeah, then we got some soundtracks in here. Got some Ghostbusters, Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't know. Just stuff that we like. All the Star Treks and not all. Some of the Star Treks. All the Star Wars. Tron Legacy soundtrack. That's a good one. Disney soundtracks. Pink Floyd. This used to light up, but that hasn't lit up in quite some time. And then the uh, Zeppelin box set. And then moving on, these are, this is kind of the to watch pile. This is just stuff that we haven't had time to watch yet, or I've seen some of it, not all of it. Like I was watching Dark City a while back, never finished it. Not because it was bad, just because I fell asleep. Invisible Man, just pick that up. Oh, there's Detective Pikachu. Then we just got some figures and whatnot, some lanyards. Going down another shelf, we've got an old cassette stereo, some tapes. So if we keep going, I've got some just blank media. Here's uh, autographed Crystal Lake Memories set, Crow and Tom Servo, and then just some blank 
cases. If we go to the bottom bottom, oh, those were my knees. These are all of my Star Wars cards. Some are from when I was little, but most aren't because I just, I don't know what happened to them. So that's Star Wars through Jedi and the different uh, series. Here is the Freaks and Geeks yearbook set. There's a print from Disneyland. The Metallica Live Shit Binge and Purge set. I got a couple laser discs back there, Halloween and Ghostbusters. And down here, oh, we got a Godzilla, the Infinity Gauntlet set. And then over here, we've got my laptop, a bit more Godzilla, a couple headphones, and there's my fog poster, autographed by Adrienne Barbeau. She was super sweet. And there we go. That is it. That's everything, you guys. And if you have any questions or comments or anything, just drop me a message down below. Take care, you guys, and I will catch you next time. Shit. Now I gotta put all this away.